Hello, church. Today's devotional is called Three Things That Will Strangle Your Soul. When I first started preparing this devotional, uh, I wanted to call it the three tools that Satan will use to prevent you from living a life for God and being fruitful for God. But I realized that the parable that we're, we're talking about isn't just talking about being fruitful for God, but it's talking about eternal life. Our souls are at stake here, and, and uh, it, there are three things that will strangle our souls and prevent us from entering eternal life. So, this verse is from Luke chapter 8, verse 14. This is the parable of the soils, where Jesus talks about the soils and he threw them on four different soils, and only one of them bore fruit for eternal life. And uh, one of them that did not bear fruit uh, was in verse 14, and Jesus says, As for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life and their fruit does not mature. It's amazing how Satan has something to offer to all of us, to every human being on earth. Satan has something to offer to us to choke our souls. And oftentimes, it's not just one. Oftentimes, it can be two of those things, or it could be three of all three of those things. Jesus says, the cares the riches, and the pleasures of life. What are the cares? The cares of life. The cares of life are the things in, the li- in our life that make us worry excessively. I'm not talking about being careful or being responsible, but I'm talking about worrying and the things that cause anxiety in our hearts, whether it be uh, financial problems, right, or, or all the unrest that is happening right now. The, and when we begin to excessively worry about these things and not trust God, that in itself is the care that Jesus is talking about. It's the cares of life that that spring up and choke the word so that the fruit in our hearts and in our lives won't mature for God. Anxiety and the cares of life and the, the, the worries of this life are one of those things that if, if gone unchecked, if not brought to God, if not fought with the word of God that's given to us, it will damn us into hell, brothers and sisters. You know, it it doesn't seem like a very unspiritual thing, like the riches and pleasures of life, right? Riches, uh, riches, you know, that, that sounds a lot more worldly, right? Riches, you know, all those rich business people going and just trying to make a buck on Wall Street and, and trying to be rich and have uh, all these great things. Yeah, you know, we could see how that doesn't make, you know, people like that won't make it into heaven. And, and, but that's a very real temptation, right, for, for a lot of people. For a lot of people, it's, you know, they set up their families and now it's just about riches, about, you know, making it uh, until the retirement, right, and just working for retirement, always working, always working. It's like, I'm going to serve God later, after I retire or after, you know, I, I, I do well in my career, then I'm going to serve God. That is a prime example of the riches choking the word of God so that the fruit does not mature. That's such a lie that Satan tells all of us. He says, oh, oh you, as long as soon as you get this, then you're going to serve, then you're going to really serve God. So just focus on this, but that's a lie because God never promises us tomorrow. All we have is today. And the question is, are we serving him today? Are we glorifying him today? I'm not saying we should go quit our jobs, right? But we have to glorify him every single day, just like we need to, we need to work every single day, right? Uh, Sorry, we need to eat every single day. We don't delay eating after until after we're done and did well in our careers. We need to eat every single day. And it's the same thing with our souls. Riches are so deceptive and it's so easy, especially for people in the middle class, people with families. It's so easy to just, that's all we see is just 
you know, going and earning money and just working and providing for your family and completely losing sight of God and the kingdom of God and the word of God and not having it truly be in our lives the way it's meant to, not having our lives centered on God but on our jobs and our careers. The third thing that Jesus mentions are the pleasures of life. You don't have to be rich to have the pleasures of life choke your soul so that you don't make it into the eternal life. It's, we're all tempted by this. And, it, and it's not, this is not just, you know, like drugs. This is, this is anything. It could be travel. It could be restaurants. You know, it's, it's these experiences. It's, it's what is, what are you living for? What is that thing that you're craving for? What is that thing that you can't wait until the weekend comes to do that thing? It might be just fishing. It might be fishing. And, and it's, it's wild because people, there are people that are going to be in hell because of fishing. Not because fishing itself is evil or sinful and my grandfather fished, I fished with him, but it's, was that their everything? Was that the thing that they lived for? The thing that choked out the word out of their hearts so there was no room? Did fishing occupy their hearts so much that there was no room for the word of God in their hearts? That's the real question. So, as we examine our lives, and the easiest way to see what's choking you is to ask yourself, well, what do I think about most? What do I think about most? What is the first thought when I wake up? Is it, is it, oh, I can't wait until the weekend comes so I can go fishing, or I can't wait until I travel here, here, and do this, or try this kind of food? Is it, oh, I can't wait until, you know, I make more money, uh, do my business, or at work, or I get the next paycheck, or I get this commission, whatever it is. Is it money? I can't wait until I retire or until I have this much money or I can buy, a, buy this kind of house or live in this kind of neighborhood? Or is it just simply the cares of life? Oh, what's going to happen to us? What's going to happen to the future? What's going to happen to my kids? What's going to happen to my grandkids? And it's this constant, never-ending worry, 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 worry. It doesn't matter which of those three things or which combination of two or three of those things are in our minds. If we let it go unchecked without the power of God, they will strangle our souls and we will not bear any fruit for God for eternal life and we will be damned to hell. And the solution to this, I love, I love Psalm 1. It says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight, delight, is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree that's firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season. Notice that tree is fruitful. The tree that's, con the plant that's contrasted in Luke chapter 8 verse 14 is one that does not bear fruit. But Psalm 1 is the man who does bear fruit in his season. And what's the secret? It's planted by the streams of water. And what are those water? It's his delight is in the law of the Lord. It's not, it's not just that he reads his Bible in the morning, but his delight, his heart loves, his heart enjoys the word of God, just like that fisherman enjoys fishing or that, that businessman enjoys making and growing his business, just like that mother that's always worried about everything, craves and incessantly worries about things, the man in Psalm 1 that is blessed, his delight from his heart is in the law of the Lord and because of that, he is able to yield his fruit in its season and that is beautiful. May God help us delight in his word so that there might be room in our hearts for his word and so that it, the word, would choke out the cares and the riches and the pleasures of life so that we may bear fruit for God and meet him in eternity. May God bless us and be with us. May this be our prayer, church. 
Amen.